Now let's start with a particular demand curve and a particular supply curve. And let's analyze what happens when our demand increases by 6 at each price. So we so said the first thing that we want to do here is we want to figure out where the original equilibrium is. So if we think about this demand curve here, so well, if this demand curve is 32 minus 4p, then we can say that the intercept down here on the q-axis is where p equals 0, or 32, and the intercept up here on the p-axis is where q equals 0. So if 0 equals 32 minus 4p, that's going to happen when the price is equal to 8. Similarly, we can figure out where the supply curve starts, because that starts at the point where our quantity supplied is exactly 0. So if we say 0 is equal to negative 4 plus 2p, that's going to happen when p is equal to 2. So we can label this as a 2 here. Now next we want to figure out where our original equilibrium price and quantity is. So the way we do that is the way that we've done it every time up until now, is to say, well, our equilibrium is where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supply. So this is going to mean that 32 minus 4p is equal to negative 4 plus 2p. Again, rearranging to get all the p's on one side and all the numbers on the other side, we end up with 6p equals 36, which means that our equilibrium price, our p star, is equal to 6. And then our equilibrium quantity, our q star, we can plug it back into either of these equations, and we see that it's equal to negative 4 plus 2 times 6, which is negative 4 plus 12, which is 8. So we can label that on our graph over here, and we can say our q star is equal to 8, and our p star is equal to 6. Now we want to take into account this increase in demand. If we're saying that our quantity demanded increases by 6 at each price, then what we're saying is that our new quantity demanded is equal to 32 minus 4p, we said, well, we're just adding 6 to quantity demanded, so we can just tack on a 6 at the end. And this is, in fact, equal to 38 minus 4p. Now, we haven't done anything to shift supply, so our supply is just what it was up here. So we can say our quantity supply is still negative 4 plus 2p. So to find our new equilibrium, Again, we just set quantity demanded and quantity supplied equal. So now our new quantity demanded has to be equal to the quantity supplied, which means that 38 minus 4p has to equal negative 4 plus 2p. Again, with the algebra, this is now 6p is equal to 42 or p star is equal to 7. So consistent with what we were expecting, when we get an increase in demand, we also get a corresponding increase in equilibrium price. So if we were to draw this here, our new equilibrium price, call that guy p1 star, is equal to 7. The corresponding quantity can be found by plugging back into either the appropriate demand equation or the appropriate supply equation. So this gives us a Q star of, let's see, 38 minus 4p when p is 7, so 38 minus 28, which is 10. So again, as we expected with an increase in demand, we not only get an increase in equilibrium price, but we get an increase in equilibrium quantity. And we can label that new equilibrium quantity here, our Q1 star is equal to 10. So this quantitative example is entirely consistent with what we saw when we were discussing the issue qualitatively. 
As a second example, let's start with the same supply and demand curve as we did before, and let's consider the effect on the equilibrium of an input cost increase of $2 per unit. What this means exactly is if our input costs increase by $2 a unit, our supply curve is essentially shifting up by $2. Because before, when you had to get a certain price to be willing to produce a particular quantity, well, if your costs go up by $2, then the price that you have to get for your output has also got to go up by $2 for you to be willing to produce that same amount as you were before. So we can say here that when our input costs go up by $2 per unit, our supply goes up by 2. Now this corresponds to a decrease in supply, as we'll see graphically, which means that when we have a decrease in supply, a shift up is the same as a shift to the left, but this isn't necessarily a shift to the left of two units, so we really have to figure out what to do with it. So what we can do is the following. We can start with this supply curve, but we can invert it to get what's called the inverse supply curve, which is price in terms of quantity supply. So we can say that 2p is equal to quantity supply plus 4, or by dividing by 2, p is equal to 1 half quantity supply plus 2. So this helps us a little bit. If we said the old price that we had to get in order to produce this quantity was one half times that quantity plus two, well then the new price that we have to get in order to be willing to produce that same quantity is this and two more. So now we can say that our new supply curve is where the price is equal to one half times the quantity supply plus two, which is what we had before, plus another two to represent this supply going up by two units. So this is just price is equal to one half times the quantity supply plus four. In order to get this back into the form that we're used to seeing it as, we're just going to do some algebra back and solve for quantity supply. So here we can say 1 half times quantity supply is equal to negative 4 plus p, or quantity supply is equal to negative 8 plus 2p. So what we had before was negative 4 plus 2p, and what we have here is negative 8 plus 2p. Notice how that doesn't correspond to just adding 2 to this side anywhere. So you have to be careful to invert it, deal with the price, and then switch it back. Okay? We can confirm that we did this correctly by graphing it. And we can say here, if our quantity supplied is equal to negative 8 plus 2p, our supply curve is going to start where quantity supplied equals 0, so where negative 8 plus 2p equals 0, or where p equals 4. Oh, well that makes sense, because that's going to put our supply curve here, starting at 4. You'll notice the original supply curve of negative 4 plus 2p started at p equals 2, because that's where our quantity supplied is exactly equal to 0. So it seems like we've gotten what we want and that we've shifted up by $2. You just want to be careful to differentiate between vertical shifts and horizontal shifts. So now we have our old equilibrium because we already did that math. Now all we have to do is take the new supply curve and the original demand curve and find the new equilibrium.